So in this video, I'm going to talk about the return ratio. And I'm going to denote it with this letter R, or this really fancy R. You'll also see it written as RR or T, depending on who's talking about it. Um, but I'm going to just use this fancy R. So what is the return ratio and why do we care? Well, the return ratio is a number that tells us the amount of feedback that we have in our circuit. And why do we care about feedback? Well, because feedback is important for things like stability. It's important for things like desensitization. So how do we make sure that our circuit does what we want it to, even when there's large variations in, for example, the gain or a given resistance or a given capacitance? And most importantly, uh, it lets us analyze systems in a new way that's, uh, I think, more intuitive and more easy. So just to give kind of a motivating example, uh, let's take a look at this circuit. So it's just, a, let's say you have your garden variety common source followed by, for example, a common drain. And then you've got this extra connection. So let's say that this goes to ground. And then let's say you've got a resistor that's going back to your input. And then you're applying some input voltage. Well, if you asked me to analyze this circuit, um, I really wouldn't want to do it. Like, this is kind of gross. Um, it's kind of disgusting. And I'm not immediately sure how to go about it. Like, we could use node analysis. Um, like we could use node analysis, but that would take a long time and I wouldn't want to do it by hand. Oh, actually, sorry for this uh, circuit to make any sense. This wire has to be connected uh, like that. Um, sorry. So if we wanted to define a number for this circuit, uh, and let's, let's just call that number R because we know a little sum about what this video is about. How would we go about doing it? How would we characterize the amount of feedback? Um, well, what I would do is I'd probably apply some test input voltage, right? So some test voltage. And then just kind of see what happens. So uh, this, you're going to cause a current to flow through this transistor. So the current here is going to go up. Uh, then the voltage at this node, uh, the voltage is going to go down because there's a voltage drop across this resistance. And because this is a common drain or a source follower, uh, since the guy's gate is going down, this source is also going to go down. So the voltage at this node goes down. And that's going to cause the voltage at this node to go down, which causes the voltage at this node to go up, and so on and so forth. And we can keep doing this forever, but we kind of see that the feedback is going in a certain direction. So it's going from here to here back to here. So it actually doesn't matter um, for analyzing the feedback what this test input is uh, or what this input voltage is. So if we just want to analyze the feedback, um, we can actually ground this. We can say, well, the input voltage is actually zero. I just want to analyze the circuit uh, without the input voltage and see what happens. And that's because except for starting up this feedback loop, the input voltage isn't actually involved uh, whatsoever in the operation of this feedback loop. But now we're left with kind of a problem because if we've got no input voltage, then we've got no VGS here, uh, no current here, no voltage, and this whole thing, uh, whole thing is meaningless. Uh, so whole thing is uh, meaningless. So how do we how do we actually go about testing the amount of feedback in this circuit so what can we do about this well we know that the reason that there's going to be no voltage is that everything in here is a dependent source so we require some sort of all the sources in here are dependent sources so we need to replace one of these dependent sources with an independent source and the only way that the easiest way in, in my mind to do that is uh, we know we've got an independent source inside each of these transistors. So we know inside of each, each of these transistors is a current source or a dependent current source uh, of value GM VGS. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to take one of those sources and replace them with a current source of value gm v test. And v test is just some test voltage. It's some test voltage that lets us get this feedback loop started. And then we can analyze the voltages that as we go around the loop, and then we can see how much feedback we have. So now the only difficulty is how do we define a number? Uh, how do we define this number R such that it characterizes the amount of feedback? Well, one interesting thing about this circuit now is that the loop, uh, the feedback loop has been broken. And what do I mean by that? Well, if I've got a, let me just erase these arrows real quick so we can track things as they go around the loop. Um, if I know I've got an independent current source inside this transistor, then if that current increases, that's gonna cause this node to go down, right? Because there's a current flowing through a resistor, which is dropping a voltage. Um, and since this is a common drain or a source follower, we know that this voltage is going to go down. And through this somewhat awkwardly poised voltage divider, we can see that this voltage is gonna go down or you can compute KVL, KCL, and you'll, you'll see that. And so this guy's VGS, so, let me just erase this arrow too. Um, so this transistor's VGS value is going down. So we would expect that this current uh, also starts to go down, except now this is an independent source. So we've effectively broken the feedback loop. And the value that would have uh, caused this current to go down is VGS. So if we can find VGS and we know the applied test voltage, or GMV test equivalently, then we can characterize the amount of feedback, R, as the ratio between the returned voltage, VGS, divided by the test voltage. And you'll see, since this feedback is negative, um, that VGS uh, would actually be a negative quantity, and that would make the return ratio uh, negative. But uh, I like dealing with positive numbers. Everyone likes dealing with positive numbers. So we're just gonna slap a minus sign out front somewhat, uh, somewhat arbitrarily to define the return ratio as positive. Now, because this VGS voltage is uh, the value that we got returned from the feedback loop, uh, we just call it minus VR over V test. So this is the return ratio. I always prefer to think of it as in terms of VGS because I think that's the most useful definition. Uh, and it will always work for all the dependent sources um, that you analyze uh, in terms of transistors. But VR uh, is a more more general form, uh, which allows you to use any voltage. It doesn't need to be uh, VGS. It just needs to be some uh, dependent source that you replace. So in the next video, I'll go over a couple of examples just to drive this home and so that we can cal actually calculate the return ratio for various circuits involving both transistors and op-amps. Um, and so I, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please like and comment below uh, or if you have any questions. And I'll see you next time. Bye.